Well, joining me now is Dr. Rob Hunter, who is the Head of Flight Safety at the British Airline Pilots Association. Belper, thank you for being with us. On the assumption that things happened as the French prosecutors believe they mm -hmm. did, is there anything about British Airlines and British Airline pilots which means that this couldn't have happened? Well, I think the checks on pilots are very rigorous, uh, amongst the greatest of any of the occupations, really. Um, they have very intensive simulator checks, so if uh, this, is, if this uh, uh, terrible disaster was caused by a psychological illness, then uh, that makes it very difficult to complete the simulator checks, which are very demanding. I mean, you're saying you think that British airline pilots have better psychological checks than Germans, for example? I, I wouldn't say that they're necessarily better, but I certainly think they're robust. What about the ta technical things that seem to have happened, the possibility of one pilot being left on the flight deck alone mm -hmm. and being able to lock out the other pilot? Could that happen on a British plane? That could have happened, yes. yes. And uh, do you think there is a need to, to possibly change the rules that's been talked well, about? Well, I think certainly as a result of this disaster, there's a need to, look at the, to investigate the accident and to learn from it. That's how aviation safety achieves its huge safety record. It's a sort of Darwinian approach. You, you look to see what caused this and then seek to eliminate it uh, in the future. Because as I understand it, one of the ironies is that the ability to lock the cockpit is actually a sort of anti-terror precaution. That's right, and it shows you how uh, these measures can be very repercussive, so they have to be thought through and analysed. From what you've heard and what you've seen, uh, do you have any doubt that this did happen, that one, one person decided to crash this plane and take his own life and those of everyone else on board? I can only go on what the French prosecutors have said, and they, and they seem to have no doubt, but uh, I can't really speculate beyond that. It is a completely extraordinary event, though. Have you come across suicide by a pilot before? I haven't, actually, and I've got a lot of experience in this area. I mean, because it, it, it does seem extraordinary that killing yourself could blind you to the fact that you were killing so many other people, or indeed that you would want to kill so many other people. It, it, it is, and for example, it's not a, a typical consequence of depression, for example. The, the problem with depression in flying is the reduction in your cognitive abilities. It's not this risk of killing yourself or others, really. What, what are the uh, psychological tests which uh, are conducted on, on pilots uh, which could rule them out from flying? Okay, well, in, in addition to the simulator checks that I was talking about, uh, they'll have to pass their medical evaluation. They'll have to make a declar declaration of their medical fitness, any psychological problems. Mm -hmm. And their aviation medical examiner will then follow up on anything that either the pilot has reported or that they pick up on. There's also a system of peer support and peer intervention. So uh, there's a culture in aviation of reporting problems in other pilots. So really there's uh, quite a good safety culture and a uh, set of mm. systems in place. I mean, are you obliged uh, and in violation if you don't report the fact that you're seeking psychological help from medical authorities? Absolutely, it's a criminal offence not to. And would that be something which would automatically lead to your suspension from flying planes? Not, not necessarily. If you declare a psychological problem or a depression, it leads to you be, being assessed. Now, the initial stage of that assessment might, might uh, happen with you being uh, grounded whilst evidence is gathered, but um, pilots can be assessed following depressive illness and minor psychological illness, and if treated and they're no longer symptomatic and well controlled, then uh, it is possible to return to flying. And uh, do you feel that, um, looking at this now, that there will be people who are more worried about flying and, and should they be more worried? I think inevitably there will be people who are more worried about flying but as to should they, well flying is extraordinarily safe and remains so. So the, uh, the performance of the aviation industry is, is exemplary when con compared to so, other so As you say sectors. at the beginning we have to learn from these mm. experiences. Mm -hmm. What changes will you at BALPA be calling for to make sure it doesn't happen again however unlikely it is? Well, that's so dependent on the results of the investigation, and we really don't know, you know, what was in this sick note, what the illness was, what, uh, uh, you know, what was going through his mind on that day. And then in terms of what, measure, what measures you take, um, as I said, they can be very repercussive. So it's important not just to go into a sort of uh, knee-jerk reaction. It really is a matter for very careful consideration in due course.